Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Lisa from Post to My Wall, and I'm going to be your host today. Today, our special guest is more than a subject matter, matter expert. She is a small business owner herself. Linda Regler of Chase Creek Smokehouse is here to share 10 marketing ideas to grow bar and restaurant loyalty. As owner and manager of Chase Creek Steakhouse, or co-owner and manager, Linda's marketing efforts have been instrumental in growing the restaurant and in keeping everything going through COVID. So to get warmed up um, as people are coming in, how about everybody says hi to Linda in the comments and let her know what your restaurant marketing challenges are and where you're watching from. I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. Linda, who is on her vacation, is in Isla Mujeres, Mexico, um, rather than her normal location, which is Chase, Michigan. Rimshaw is in Lahore, Pakistan, and Audrey is in the San Francisco Bay Area. So who wishes that their bar or restaurant customers were so incredibly devoted that if you were late posting your specials on Facebook one day, people would start emailing you to ask what was the matter. I mean, this is exactly what happens to Linda. I mean, I think this is phenomenal. Um, she has built that strong of loyalty among her customers for the Chase Creek Smokehouse since she took over marketing seven years ago. Today, we're gonna to interview Linda about the marketing strategies and tactics she uses to build strong relationships with her customers. She's gonna share some of her campaigns and talk about why she does things the way that she does. Our goal for today is for you to leave with at least one idea you can apply right away to increase the success of your marketing. And if you stay till the end, we have some free bonus content. So a few quick reminders. If you have any questions for Linda, please put them in the comments. Audrey's watching the comments and she will relay them to Linda. And if you, we don't get to your comment live, we will answer you within the next couple of hours. The video will stay here on our Facebook page, so you can come back and rewatch anytime you like. And please do share this with anybody that you think would uh, benefit from the class. All right, so welcome to Linda. Why don't you start, let me put the slide up, picture of your restaurant. Why don't you start by telling us what and where is Chase Creek Spokehouse? Uh, Chase Creek Smokehouse is a smokehouse. We're located in Chase, Michigan. Um, which is a very, very tiny little town of about 300 people. Um, about 20 some, 22 years ago now, my husband had an idea um, just in front of this picture where the grassy knoll is, um, used to be uh, railroad tracks. And they took all the railroad tracks out and made them a rails to trails. And he thought it would be a great place for snowmobilers to stop um, on the snowmobile trail. And it just kind of took off. And um, in 2012, we had a fire. Um, so the whole building was a total loss. And then we reopened um, in about late October, early November of 2013. And that's kind of the time in that time frame of the fire when I took over the Facebook page. Um, we just, the person that was doing it wasn't working for us anymore. And people were asking all these questions and um, so we started marketing more on Facebook. So what do you feel like you've accomplished since you took over the marketing at Chase Creek Smokehouse? Well, the, the biggest thing is the number of followers it is just um, phenomenal to me. It's, it's awe-inspiring. Um, we, I think, had 368 people or something like that when I took over, and uh, at last count, we're over 11,000 followers now in, in, in that uh, seven, eight years since I took over the Facebook page. Um, and we also survived through COVID with um, all of our employees came back, except for one that moved out of state. Um, and so for many of my fellow restaurateurs, um, that was a pretty dark and scary time. And, and so to, to come out on the other side and be stronger than ever is, is, um, is pretty awesome. Awesome, awesome. And so how were you able to accomplish all of that? It's all about creating relationships with your customers, um, both on Facebook and in person. Um, there's, there's people that I, I've met uh, on Facebook um, or through social media feeds um, that I don't meet until sometimes a couple years later, we actually end up in the restaurant at the same time. Um, so it's knowing the guy who um, likes the chicken fajita um, 
chimichanga and he doesn't work on Wednesdays, so only message him when we have it on Fridays for a special and um, the lady who likes the bluegill dinner who's from out of town and so we message her when we you know again it's getting to know your customers what they like um, what they like to see posted um, and just creating a relationship they're they're your guests and this is our our home so to speak um, and so we we want to make everyone feel welcomed do you do any paid advertising? Um, almost none. Um, we do an ORV trail map and we do a snowmobile trail map and that's the only paid advertising we do. Everything else we do is on social media. Wow, and so social media would be? Um, Facebook, Instagram, um, which my Instagram game is not as good as I'd like it to be. Um, but I'm I'm working on it. Um, I just kind of post the similar content that I that I post on Facebook. Um, but but those are our two primary categories. Um, we're, we're getting ready to start dipping into TikTok. Um, and again, it's looking at who your customers are and what platforms they're using and what different ways you can um, make connections with them. So, what would your advice? to other people about, you know, what did you do that you think is most responsible for growing your following? And I'm also going to go to our first slide for our first marketing tip. Um, it is definitely posting consistently and paying attention to, to what people like. Um, so I somehow got it in my head, like, you know, happy Monday, and I get an email every day that says all what the national calendar days are. Um, so I'll pick, pick one that I think I can make a cute little entryway with. Um, and then I post, um, we open at 11 o'clock. So I post our specials. I try to um, at, at between 10 and 1030 every morning. Um, and then um, I post what our specials are going to be for the day um, slides that I make on poster my wall if um, for any events that we might be having um, this week, all week I've been posting that we're closed on Sunday for Easter. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. I post pictures of our food with a description um, so people can see what, what it is we're offering. Um, sometimes things don't, don't look the same as, as what they sound like when you're just reading about them. And so to see the food, people are like, wow, that looks really good. And they'll start tagging each other. Um, hey, let's go, you know, it's margarita day. Let's go have margaritas or, you know, that steak looks awesome. Um, and so those are the engagements that, that we look for from our customers. So how are you able to create enough content to keep posting daily? Where do you find your ideas? Um, usually it, it's mostly what's what's going on. Like I say, I use that national, that national calendar day to kind of kick things off. Um, I look at anything that we have up and coming. If I see something funny, um, or, or something cute that I think will draw engagement. We've done like on National Twin Day, we've done, um, um, you know, send comment below with a picture of you and your twin for a chance to win a gift card, um, some things like that. Um, but but it's just something I, I've done every day or almost every day. Um, internet is internet. So sometimes, sometimes things don't go the way you want them to. Um, but, uh, but it's just a matter of always being on the lookout for, for something, what's coming up, what can we do? Can we tie an event into something that's, um, that's coming in the future? Um, and, and we want to, to share that information with our customers. And how do you know that social media is working and driving customers to your restaurant? Uh, when it, our likes keep continuing to increase, so we, we keep getting new followers. Um, sometimes it's comments that, that are made directly on the post. Um, sometimes it's people I see in person that, that say, hey, I saw that post, so we came in to, to get such and such, or um, you, you know, things like that. Customers make comments about. Um, and, and so you know, I, I watch, I don't live by it. It's not my do or die, um, but I do watch the insights that Facebook gives you um, and, and look at you know, am, are my posts being effective? Are they seeing, um, you know, a, a lot of people seeing my trends? Because I mean, with 11,000 people, nobody's going to see all of your stuff. Um, and, and so when we start seeing those numbers up in three, 4,000, those, those are really good numbers to, to have at this point. And then if you have engagements that come with that, um, you know, how many likes did we get? How many comments did we get? And, and so those are the things. I, I, again, I use it more to, to build that relationship with people. 
Okay, we're going to move on to our second tip, create your own content style. Now, we have noticed that, um, you know, you do some things that, you know, like you, you mix a lot of things on one post. You will have the photos of your food. You'll have upcoming events. Sometimes you're looking for employees. You have your specials of the day. Um, so, you, you know, tell us about that. Tell us about why you mix everything on a single post daily. Um, I don't want people to be inundated with um, a whole bunch of posts from us. Um, I feel like if we're posting each, like if I posted the hiring separate and this separate and this separate, and I want to do all in one day, um, people are going to start unfollowing us because it's just too much content. They, they want to connect with their people. They want to, you know, they don't want to see just all business related stuff. So I try to make it easy. They know I post my specials every day. And so I try to put everything that I can in that post um, so they know it's one place to look for the stuff. You don't have to go digging through a whole bunch of posts to, to find what's going on. Um, and, and so that's just been kind of my, my style of putting things together. So in other words, you, you think everybody should just figure out what is what works best for their own audience and not worry so much about what experts say is the best way? Exactly. I mean, certainly I couldn't be doing what I did without attending many of the classes that, that like we're doing right now. Um, so, but, but you have to pick the things that make sense for your business um, that are, that this is kind of like your personality, it's your or your business's personality. And, and so you want to do the things that coincide with the, the face that you want to give your business. So, so do, do what works for you. It, it, you know, posting everything all in one shot may not, may not work for you. You may, might find that more people are not, not reacting and not coming in. Um, certainly my way is not the only way. This is just over the course of the years, what I have found has worked best for us. Okay, so your third tip was to communicate in your natural voice. Um, you know, a lot of people's captions, they try to be super, super cool or hip. Um, and you have a very warm, approachable online voice. You do, you. you do joke occasionally, you're welcome. Um, but you're very straightforward. So what are your thoughts on that? How, how should somebody, what, how do they develop a voice for their captions? I just try to talk to people the same way that I would talk to you in person. Um, maybe just a, a little more business casual than how I would talk to you, you know, in, in my restaurant. Um, but but you want to to get the information out as, as best as you can. Um, my posts tend to get a little long, um, but for most people, they skip over the words about the about the what the specials are. Look at the pictures, um, but but it's important to to decide this is how our branding is, and this is how we want to be perceived out in the marketplace. And so for, for us, that has just worked as, as talking to people like we would if they were sitting down in our bar with us. Hey, thank you. Um, next tip is create a tradition that keeps people coming back. Uh, the thing that we loved was that you have a drink of the week. Uh, will you tell that story? Yeah, that, that kind of came <laughs> by a boo-boo. Um, we, we had something, uh, a drink or a, a liquor that um, we were trying to get rid of. One, one of our regulars had used to drink it. Um, we'd had seven bottles of it for the, oh, I think four years. I think we've been doing this for three years now. But for many, many years, I'd never ordered a bottle, never gotten rid of any of it. And so I, I went to our, uh, one of our lead bartenders, um, Tara was now, and said, hey, can you come up with a drink of the week special and let's get rid of this stuff. Um, and they, they came up with a drink of the week special. We got rid of all of it and people loved the drink they came up with so much. I'm now ordering that, <laughs> that liquor again. Um, but it, it went over so well. We're like, hey, some things like, especially in the summertime, we can now make a whole batch of something ahead of time. Um, and pour rather than having to create drinks over and over and over again. And people look forward to it. A lot of people come in and they don't 
exactly know what they want to drink and they see the slides in our dining room and they're like, wow, that's cool. Let's have some of that. And so that's what we then use to the, the ones that do well, we then transition to our seasonal drink menu um, and, and then they're on the drink menu all the time. Okay, and so the, what we're showing on the screen, uh, in addition to putting it on social media, you also create posters that go up in the, in the uh, restaurant. Yes, um, the, the drink of the weeks, I don't, I don't make posters up. We have a, t a big TV in the dining room and I have graphics that slide through. So, so they're, they're on there. Um, the Thirsty Thursday, we have posters of our half um, sandwich and soup specials. I make posters of um, like the closed on Easter, we make a poster of that. And so it's figuring out and some of them are just like this Thirsty Thursday, that's a picture that's just printed on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Um, so that's something that I just even did in house. I didn't didn't send out to have a poster made for. Um, but uh, but it, it's really nice to see people looking at your things and and realizing again the same thing with these. We try and um, you know make it something special that catches your eye. That um, so when people look at something you've created and then they start buying it, you're like you know makes you feel good. Right. Thank you, that's awesome. Um, when we spoke earlier, you also said that one of the ways you get the most engagement on social media is by selecting post topics that are personally meaningful to your customers. So how do you, you know, how do you decide what those topic, what those topics are? And can you give us some examples? Um, we've done a, a number of them. Um, a, a lot of the, them started during COVID. Um, when I don't have the opportunity for that one-on-one -on -one engagement with my customers because we're carry out and it's a mask and it's five minutes you know, or less and you're in and out of the building. Um, so we started creating content because I still felt it was important to, to post every day. Um, so we did a um, coloring contest. We did um, a pet crazy contest. So it was um, show, show me a picture of your crazy pet. And, and we gave out, um, I use a random name picker and they, um, they go through and it picks who the winner is and they get a $25 Chase Creek gift card. Um, we've done things, um, my, my son, I took two weeks off at Christmas and my son took over for me. They had a, a daddy's, uh, a daddy daughter dance, or I think they call it my guy, my guy and me, they call it now. Um, and so the dads were coming in with their, with their daughters and they're all dressed up. I mean, it's, it's like prom for, for little kids. And, um, and so he took a whole bunch of pictures of the dads with their, with their daughters and post them on social media. So they, they got kind of excited. It was cool for them to see themselves on our website or on our Facebook page rather. Um, so, so again, it's things that, that want to make your customers come back to you, things that um, they know that you care about them and that you want to, to engage with them and create those relationships with them. Okay, and one of the, our favorites when we were looking through your feed uh, was Gorgeous Grandma Day. Tell us about that one. Yes, Gor Gorgeous Grandma Day. Um, my, my grandma is no longer with us. So that really kind of hit me. And so that was one of the ones we, we said, um, you know, show us a picture of your gorgeous grandma. And, and I think there was like four or 500 people that, that responded to that, to that post. Um, and posted pictures either just of their grandmas or of themselves with their grandmas. Um, and, it, and it was just really cool seeing, you know, grandmas are cool. And so they need to be appreciated and they need to be recognized. And so it was just kind of a cool way to do that. Awesome. And we also have a picture here of the coloring contest. Um, so why do you run coloring contests for kids? Um, it, this one, again, we did during, during COVID. Um, so it was another way to to uh, reach out during that time when we're dying when we're closed for the dining room, um, and that's what um, and that's what the the lead is. That's why it says that we can't wait until all roads lead you back to Chase Creek Smokehouse. Um, so this was a way for us to get some branding out to um, give the kids something to do, um, and we wanted we just wanted them 
everybody was looking for stuff at that time. I think we were a month into to, um, lockdowns and, um, you, you know, no more than the people in your home who live in your home. And we just really wanted to, to keep in contact with our customers um, and try. We did things, um, all sorts of silly things. Um, I think one of them was create, create a fort in your living room and send us a picture. Um, we did, um, oh, there was another one I can't think of, but, but yeah, so we, we, we did quite a few different things. And again, those are things, some of them um, I got from other sources that, that were helping with social media posts at that time. Um, so certainly these classes that, that you take online, you can't use everything from them, but they do give you ideas and they help spur along the next idea based on what was successful from the last one. All right, and how do you, do you promote these outside of social media in any way? No, they're all social media posts. So um, Linda, in an earlier slide, um, you mentioned that we need to identify um, what our customers would like to see. So, and over here, you obviously mentioned that we need to choose post topics that are meaningful to customers. So I just wanted to know how exactly do you figure out what your customers would like to see? Like, do you have a particular process? Do you do it through surveys or comment cards or um, do you track activity um, on your Facebook page to figure that out? Yeah, I, tr I track my, I track activity. I, I base it on how many people respond, how many people like, how many people share the post. Um, I, I, um, I don't typically get a lot of, I mean, of course, the people who come in to collect their gift cards, we get feedback from, from them. Um, but it, it's just, again, looking at to what I feel is successful um, in a post, and, and it's that engagement. And, and I really feel the most successful posts are the ones that get the most comments, that people took that two seconds out of their day to, to make a comment on a post or um, to ask you a question or, or that kind of stuff. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Rimshaw. Next, um, you talked about you're a big fan of gift cards. So can you tell us a little bit about your thinking why you do go why you you know why you uh, are a big fan of gift cards? Gift, gift cards work for for two reasons. Um, uh, you know, a, a twenty five dollar gift card, as most business owners will tell you, don't cost me twenty five dollars. Um, it, it's whatever the cost, uh, the actual cost of the food was that, that they that they selected when they redeemed the card. Um, the other thing is, is most people don't come back into a restaurant with a gift card by themselves. Um, so they're going to bring, you know, their significant other, their children, their grandparents, if it was, you know, gorgeous grandma day. Um, and, and so it just works well that, it, you know, the whole purpose is to drive business in, into the restaurant. And so by giving gift cards, it's only good at my restaurant or our restaurant. So they're going to come back to the restaurant for that. And then, um, and then, like I said, typically they bring someone with you. Um, I actually had one that won the other day and I, I messaged her um, and she said, you know, I said, do you, you know, do you want me to mail you the card or would you like to come pick it up? She said, well, I'm actually sitting in the dining room right now. So, so I'm like, oh, well, hang on, I'll be right out with it. And so we got a chance to meet and talk. And I mean, that was probably in the five years I've been doing this, the first time anybody was actually in the restaurant when I, when I messaged them. But um, so, so they, she and her husband had been in and they had a few extra drinks because now they had the gift card. All right. And, um, we noticed that you use a random name picker to pick your winners. So things like in the in the photo, we have the thing where you ask people to uh, share their funniest family friendly joke, and then you pick it randomly. Um, so how how do you do that, and why do you do that? Um, well, for one thing, I want it to to be fair. Um, so it, what I do is it, it, this random name picker is a Microsoft app. Um, and I just go in and create a uh, text file with all their names in it and upload it into the, into the name picker. You can select how many, like if you wanted to do something big and you want to do a first, second, third place, you can tell it that we just do one um, and then you start it. And then I use Screen Testify to record the video for me. And, um, and, then, I, and then I post it. Um, but I, I think a lot of it is, in my head, 
um, thinking of things that I want, how I want to do things and using Google to find ways to, to do them, um, which is how I found Poster My Wall, which probably is my uh, num number one marketing partner. <laughs> um, I, everything, and we now even do our menus on Poster My Wall. Um, so it, it's just been a great tool to, to help me along this journey of, uh, I, I never in a million years thought this is what I would be doing <laughs> for a living at this point. All right. Oh, and when we, in the bonus content, you'll have a link to the uh, random name picker that Linda uses. So we'll, we're, we're going to share that at the end of class. You also do a lot of events. Uh, so why don't you tell us about some of your event themes and how you pick them and how that brings people in? Um, we, we do a lot of events in the summertime. We have a beautiful um, uh, covered patio with a stage and um, uh, covered tables. And so we do a lot of live music events. We do trivia in the summertime. We do karaoke. We're getting ready to do karaoke. We didn't do it last year. Um, and, and so we love having people come to the restaurant. Um, so we started the party on the patio theme. Um, we have Thirsty Thursday has always been one of our promotions. Um, so we now tie that Thirsty Thursday in with having a band on Thursdays. Um, we, we did, we've done bike night on Thursdays, um, that, that kind of stuff. We're getting ready. Um, we're gonna do cornhole tournaments this year. Um, uh, on holiday weekends, we have bands. And, and so I, I try to create an individual graphic for each event itself, um, but I only have so much wall space. So that's the one on the, in the middle there that says upcoming events. Um, that was a way for me to, to let you know several weeks out what was coming in case it's a band that, that you liked. Um, and then every Monday I would just go through and change, you know, drop off the, the one that's passed and then add on the ones that, that are coming in the future. Okay. And where are all the places that you, that you share, share this? You said on posters in the restaurant. Also. On posters in the restaurant. Yep. And, and, and again, these ones, because they change weekly, um, I only do them in the eight and a half by 17. I have um, acrylic frames that, that I use so they don't get messed up. And then when I have them scattered throughout the restaurant on the front door, um, in the in the foyer, um, in the uh, on the, the bathroom stall doors, um, and so I just kind of go through and, and and change them up so they're it's not all the same posters and all the frames at all the time. Um, and then for the, for the big stuff, when I know like blessing of the bikes will have um, a, 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 it's an upcoming event for us in in May. Um, and we'll do the, the 24 by 36 poster because I have the time um, to, to get that. And it's a, it's a big one for us. So I'll, I'll put that a 24 by 36 out. We have frames out on the um, either side of the front doors of, of the restaurant. Okay. And you also promote on social media and you said you have some digital signage screens in your yep. bar. Yeah, we, yep, we have um, a digital signage screen in the, in the bar or not in the bar, in the restaurant. Um, in the bar, I don't because they are typically watching some kind of sports thing, so they would prefer to watch that than the advertisement. Um, but that is on my on my list of things to do. Um, and, and so, social media, inside promotions. Um, I've just recently started um, doing email marketing to um, to we, we call them the, the uh, VIP big shots. Um, there are um, our loyalty program. Uh, and, and so to get the information out that way as well. Awesome, awesome. So we have some more things showing your events. Um, there's Blessing of the Bikes. You did something for Veterans Day and uh, you know, also local events. You already touched on the Me and My Guy dance and you also do some community support occasionally with the fundraisers. Yeah, the, the fundraisers are, are usually somehow related to either our current employees um, or our former employees or um, um, community leaders. Um, let's say we've done um, a taco a taco benefit for one of our former employees. This particular one here was for the mother of one of our servers um, who had a stroke, um, and, and so we just always believe that the community has been behind us and, and as business owners, it's 
um, our, our obligation to give back to our community. And so we, we try to do that through our benefits. Awesome. You also like to partner with other local businesses? We do. Um, when I can tag another, um, like the Oberon Day, um, I, I'm not sure how it is outside of Michigan, but it, in Michigan, Oberon Day is, is technically like um, a, a holiday that the governor made it a holiday this year. Um, so it's the day that we're allowed to start pouring Oberon. Um, and so we partnered with them. We have um, Reed City Brewing Company that's um, one town over from us. Um, they're a small, a small brewery that are just getting started and we carry some of their beers. And so I create a special, every time we carry their beers, um, I'll make a special graphic for them. And we've come up with the tagline, um, magic happens when two small towns come together um, to, to promote their stuff. And, and I think a lot of people sometimes see us as, um, as competitors and, and we're really more complementary to one another. Um, you know, people come in asking for, the, for their, for their uh, beer, craft beer. And so we like to have it on tap and, um, and it has just been a really good relationship for us. Awesome. Okay, tip nine. <laughs> the other thing we noticed on your social media is that you do an excellent job of not just posting about something once, but of kind of doing a campaign where you're leading up to it. Like this, this was just your Sunday brunch. So tell us about yes. how you do that and why. Well, for, for one thing, um, with 11,000 followers, I can't send out one post that everybody is going to see. Um, we decided to, we, we had never done brunch before. Um, um, we, we'd always been kind of adamant about you no know, 11 o'clock and that's it. We're not opening before then. Um, but because of COVID and some other things, um, there was really no place um, or not, not, I shouldn't say no place. There weren't a lot of places to go for breakfast. So we decided to start brunch um, where it was a limited hours for us. We weren't going to run it all day. Um, and, and so we can't expect because I post it one time, somebody's going to see that and it's going to be a successful event. Um, so we, um, I think we started about a week and a half before we were opening and I was posting every day. Um, and then I got the menu together because we were still taste testing at this point. Um, and so then got the menu together and wanted people to see what we were going to have. Um, so we don't necessarily do your, your straight bacon and eggs. We've kind of put our smokehouse twist on breakfast. We have a, um, a smokehouse scrambler that has smoked brisket in it. Um, we have um, a chimichanga, a breakfast chimichanga that has prime rib tips in it. Um, and, then, and then, of course, we had to have some staples, the biscuits and gravy. Um, and there was no way my husband was letting us have brunch and not have biscuits and gravy. So, um, so we have some of the staples. And, and quite honestly, the menu has now grown from things. And so I'm getting ready to, to roll out a new menu for that as well. Um, and, and then I try to, so it's not the same thing. I mean, the menu is the same thing, but um, try and roll back and forth between that Sunday brunch on the left and the one in the middle. Um, so people see different things at different times. Yeah, we, we really like the way that you change things up, but you keep, you know, you keep your logo and you keep your same colors. And so it definitely has a strong branding, um, even if you use a different font or do something more playful, like the uh, illustration of the toast. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, um, I, I try. Sometimes I, I boo-boo and I, and I post before I realize I missed it. But that, that's the other thing is I, I try to never post anything um, graphically on social media that does not have our logo on it, um, even down to the um, uh, coloring pages that you saw it, it, for the coloring contest. Um, we, we got rid of um, coloring books when COVID came and now we do coloring pages. And so I still even try to make sure on our coloring pages that our logo goes on that. Um, so that when people see it, it, it triggers in their mind, oh, that's the place that had the, whatever it is they were looking at that, that enticed them. All right. And you also told us that you learned everything through free classes. So tell us where everyone can find the free classes we need. Um, I just started Googling to, to start with, and that's how I found 
um, poster on my wall. I found the, the random marketer. Um, when you start, and, and you know, all you have to do is say something <laughs> and Facebook starts putting it on your wall. Um, and so I started getting these, um, these uh, invitations to different classes um, from uh, restaurantowner.com, uh, from um, the Michigan uh, Lodging and Restaurant Association, from the National Restaurant Association, um, from Facebook sometimes, um, from people who are marketing people on Facebook that give free classes. Um, and, and so I try to take as many of those as my time will allow me to, because I'm always picking up a new idea. Um, and, and like you had said earlier, it, maybe I'm not gonna do everything that the presenter said, but there's always one or two little nuggets that I'm like, oh, it triggers an idea. And, and even if it's not the same thing, it gives me an idea for something that I think will work for us. Um, and, and like I said, I, I have um, no marketing background. I have, um, I have a human resources degree. So this is not where I thought I, I would be. And, and so it's, it's nothing magical about me that, that makes this it, other, other than taking the time to, to learn what I needed to learn and applying them. Um, but, but my dad always used to say, if you can learn for free, um, learn whatever you can, because nobody can take that away from you. And, it, and it's amazing to me over the course of the years, the things I've learned that all apply in this job that I'm doing now with the restaurant. Um, but, but Google stuff, um, restaurant, restaurantowners.com, they have a lot of things that are free to anybody, um, but they do have some specialty classes that are only um, if you're a subscriber. Um, but uh, I, I think I saw probably 20 through the course of COVID, I've watched a lot of them, um, but uh, it, it eventually became, I joined, I joined so I could get all of their content. Um, but it, it, the, the internet is just an amazing thing. Anything you want to learn is out there. You just have to go looking for it and have an idea of what, what it is you're looking for. All right, so we have one bonus tip. Um, you're a post my wall customer. So you said that some of our tools and features help you save time. Yes. Yeah, because I don't have to recreate. So like my TVs are one size, my posters are another size. Um, so I don't have to recreate the whole thing all over again with the resizing tool, copy, copy. <laughs> I learned that the hard way, copy and resize. Um, allows me to take the same the same material and then I just have to kind of adjust it for the size page. So um, one of these on the left is is what I'm doing with the um, on, on the TV and then the post the one on the right I made a poster of and that's outside our outside our front door right now um, in a 24 by 36. I can also take it and make it a eight and a half by 11. I can make it a cover photo for an event that I'm having. And so I can use a lot of the same branding in, a di in different ways by using that resize tool. Um, okay, everybody. So we have some bonus content for you. Audrey is going to put the link into the comments so you can get that. And basically we have this whole sheet on um, if you click here you will get a copy of the uh the presentation slides that we just did with all the links active so you can remember what you know what linda said today and check out some of her sources we have some contact information if you would like to start following you know chase creek smokehouse online or if you want to connect with linda and we also have some great new templates um, taken a second to come up online, but we've got some great new templates for you and some links to some other classes related to restaurant marketing. All right, so finally, we have a promo code, which Lynn, um, sorry, with, which Audrey is gonna paste into the comments, 30% off of a new premium subscription to Poster My Wall or upgrade to Premium Plus with promo code LOYALTY30. This is only good until April 22nd, so, you know, please do this right away. And also this code isn't just good for new new classes, uh, new subscribers or upgrades. It is also good for extending a subscription you already had. And I wanna remind everybody that the Storyblocks videos, um, downloads plus your own video are now included on premium. So you can 
get so much out of premium by putting together both graphics and videos and things with video backgrounds. I, we hope you'll take advantage of this. So we're gonna take a three week break now as some of our team members go on vacation, but we will be back on May 11th with another Learn With Poster My Wall class. Music expert Leonard Patterson of Artist Collective is going to be here to share six strategies to engage your music fans. So that's it for today. I hope everyone found Linda's content as useful as we did. Thank you again, Linda. Thank you, Audrey and Rimshaw. Thank you and, for having me. Oh, you're welcome. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll do some more cool things and we can have you back. And That'd be awesome. Awesome. And thank you everybody who's watching for joining us. Have a great day and we'll see you back in three weeks.